Hey, what's going on software fan? Today we're gonna to be looking at the tool PayHip, which is one of the easiest ways to sell digital downloads and memberships. When it comes to this platform, they make it a piece of cake to sell and promote your eBooks, memberships, software, design assets, music, or any type of digital products directly to your customers. PayHip has you covered, and they even allow you to sell physical products, which is another nice little benefit. An even greater benefit is that they offer a completely free account. You can sign up for free. I will put a link down below. We can actually get started with that and follow along with me. And disclaimer, keep in mind that will be my affiliate link. So if you go to that and get any type of upgraded payment plan, I will receive a small commission. Probably use it on something like, I don't know, water. I live in Florida. I drink a lot of water. Water's not great here. But either way, just wanted to let you know that. So that's what this platform is all about. Allow me to go through, do a review, a demo, features, let you know exactly what you're going to be getting, and talk about the pricing model, which I really like. Uh, but before we get into that, let's get to the good stuff. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage, okay? So here we are. What I did is I created a free account. I had created a few products. I tested it out. I deleted them because I wanted to start from square one as if you were just getting started with this so you can kind of walk through, see how it works. So the first thing you want to do is start with products and then it's going to be the store. That's another cool thing. When you create your products, you can have your store for it. As you can see right here, it says your store link is so-and-so right here. So they give you kind of that landing page in order to give to someone else where once you have your link, you can just simply promote it wherever you want. Okay, so that's a cool thing. Let's go to products. And there's gonna be three main types when it comes to the product. So let's click on add product. And as you can see right here, you're gonna have a digital product, you can have a physical product, or you can have a subscription product. Subscriptions are obviously very beneficial when it comes to something like a membership, because when you utilize memberships, you can, for the most part, you know, charge a recurring price. So everyone likes that to be paid you know, once every month. If you have more customers, more than that, obviously there's attrition, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start with the digital product. So I'm gonna click on add digital product. All right, so here's the process when it comes to adding a new digital product. Something I really liked off the bat when it comes to PayHip is that everything is step-by-step. -step. It's very easy to follow through. They have a very clean interface, simple to do. I didn't have many or any problems at all that I could remember when it comes to first utilizing this. That's always a good thing. I don't like software where if you go into it, you feel like you're just stressing out from the start. That's never a good sign and that never happened with PayHip. So two thumbs up when it comes to their UI, their experience, the user experience and everything else that comes along with it. So when it comes to adding a digital product, for example, you would add like a PDF file, you have your title, the price, the cover. Okay, if you have a cover image for it, description, visibility, and of course some advanced options which are actually very helpful. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna quickly just fill in a few like, you know, random PDF file, give it a title, a price, and I'm gonna pause the video, or I'm gonna do it, and then I'm gonna skip over to the finished product so you can see what it looks like. So give me a sec, and I will see you in a sec. Okay, and just like that, here I am. So I just created a random PDF and saved it as something just to put it in as a filler, it didn't have to be, but that's normally where your PDF file would go. You can upload another product file if you want, okay? I gave it a title just because I already have a course like this and I'm just using that for example, example price, whatever you want it to be. Also, whenever you see a question mark, you can hover over it and it'll give you a little bit more information. Also, the cool thing here, you can actually embed an audio or video. It's actually very easy to do as well. For example, if you have a YouTube video, Video, all you need is the link and you can actually put that there in a placeholder so when someone comes to your landing page where they can buy it you could just have a video of you talking about the product which you know it's cool if you want to do that's up to you description pretty much you know you can do it's kind of like a blog post here you can type in anything that you want you have your headers you have your bold you have your bullets uh, you have links and you have some emojis if you want to add those as well visibility this is really going to be dependent on you obviously visible everyone can see it invisible nobody except you can see this product and unlisted is going to be only people who know the direct link to this product can see it because when you do have a store maybe this is going to be kind of like a secret one and you don't want a lot of people seeing it that would be a reason why you want to use enlisted but for the most part my guess is you'll probably want it visible now the cool section here is there's going to be advanced options. I didn't show you these before, but I will now just because these are some pretty unique and cool options that you can utilize. So for example, if you want to use them, you can click on and do this product is tax exempt. Uh, product is an ebook question mark. So if you have transactions in EU, okay, that might apply to you. Uh, upload a preview file for your customers. Example, a few pages as a teaser. If you want to do that, you can upload the preview file. That's kind of cool. If you ever go to Amazon, I do that sometimes if I'm going to you know get a book, I'll look through it, check out the table of content, see if I like where it's going. And a lot of times I've noticed if I check it out and I like it, there's a higher chance that I'm going to buy. So that's a cool little feature to add. Okay. Limit the number of times this product can be sold. I really like this. How many times have you seen marketers be like, there's only 90 available and you know, they're selling way more than that. Cause 
If you don't have something like this, it's gonna be very annoying to go in and count how many sales have made, especially if they're coming in really fast on a launch. So this will actually allow you to have only a specific amount. So if you say like only for 10 people, it will only allow you to sell 10. So once 10 gets sold, it's gonna close down and it'll do it automatically for you. So I really like that there's a feature like this. Either way, just for this example, I'm gonna uncheck it. If you wanna use that, you can automatically subscribe customers to mailing. So this is how you're gonna build a buyer's list. So in case you're wondering what the current integrations are when it comes to email marketing, I'm gonna open this up in a new tab and then I will show you. Okay, so here we are when it comes to the mailing list that you can set up. Keep in mind that I'm sure they can always add more in the future. This is just at the time of creating this video. Okay, so Aweber, Campaign Monitor, ConvertKit, Drip, Elastic Email, Email Octopus, Get Response, Mad Mimi, I think it's Mimi, right? MailChimp and MailerLite. Okay, so there's some of the few that you can use currently. When it comes to actually when someone purchases, you can put them on your list, which is a good thing because that's how you're gonna capture your buyers. And last but not least, this is pretty cool if you're selling software. So software is something else that you can sell when it comes to using Payhub. You can generate unique license keys for each sale. So this is very good to use. For example, I know like if you have a WordPress plugin, a lot of times they come with license keys. I know I've purchased a lot of WordPress products myself where you go in and you have to enter your username and then the license key. So something like that would be perfect when it comes to you know software if you're selling that. Once again, I'm just gonna uncheck that. So that's pretty much as simple as it is when it comes to listing your product. This is not a very uh, difficult thing to do. Let's click it in the add product now. Okay, so before I do the show me my product page, what I wanna also do is go to dashboard. Okay, I wanna do one more example when it comes to creating a product, okay? Let's do add new. And this time I'm just gonna do subscription just so you can get an idea of what the features are that come along with it because I know uh, subscription slash membership or anything related to that are gonna be very popular, especially if you're looking to you know create an, a recurring income with any type of membership or whatever it's going to be. So I'm just gonna do this. There we go, I've done this before. Once again, I'll, I'll do this very quickly. You know what the description is, uh, description, subscription image. I'm just gonna leave that blank for now. But here's the cool thing. This is like the good stuff here. So when it comes to the plan name, we can just do, I think I did this before. Yeah, sure, small plan. Okay, recurring price, let's just say it's going to be, I don't know, nine bucks, okay? When it comes to intervals, there's a lot that you can even customize it. There's the basic stuff like monthly, three months, six months, yearly, you can do custom. And this is very flexible, so you can do any number here and you can do that for days, weeks, or months. So it's really gonna be up to you if you wanna do five days or you wanna do five weeks, months, whatever it's going to be. Usually, you know, the standard is gonna be monthly, that's why it's probably there, but, but if you really wanna customize that, it's obviously there uh, for you to utilize. So then you have plan description, display additional information from plan for customers. So you can do that if you want, it's gonna be up to you where you can add more. Plan image, illustrate differences between plans with a unique image. So if you have that, this is pretty much like a pricing chart. If you've ever seen those, I'll show you one later when it comes to Payhip, I believe they have one. But if you wanted to create your own, you can do that. Trial period, so you can enable a trial period. How long should it be for? Seven days, 14 days, 30 days, whatever it's going to be. Then of course you can assign digital products for subscribers, that's gonna be optional. Then of course, once again, you can add another plan. So maybe you have three plans. This is gonna be the small plan, maybe there's the medium plan, maybe there's the bigger plan. That's gonna be up to you, but it's very flexible when it comes to choosing the plans, the amount of month that the customers are going to pay, how often they pay, and of course, the finer details. So that's just a very quick example. Let's move to the advanced options. So once again, you can automatically subscribe customers to your mailing list. We talked about that previously when it was just a regular digital product. And once again, for your subscribers download area, group your assigned products for this subscription into collections. So it says this can be useful if you have a large number of assigned products available for your subscribers to download. So that once again, you're probably not gonna be using that right off the bat, but in the future, it's a good thing to have when it comes to advanced options. I believe I filled out the important stuff. Like I said, this is just basic. I just wanted to show you how it, you kind of go through and create it. So let's click on add subscription. All right, so here we are when it comes to the store section. Obviously you can launch your store builder if you wanna do that, which we are. I just kinda wanna let you know what else comes along with it. If you wanna do some blog posts, that's fine. They do have the ability to add them. You know, you might do a few that are related to your products or maybe answering questions, whatever it's going to be. You can also utilize your own custom domain by going through there, clicking on connect existing domain. And then from there, obviously they're gonna go through the steps when it comes to doing that, okay? So that's the basic stuff. Now let's go to launch your store builder because any type of software 
like this is going to come with some type of builder, whether it's going to be landing pages, sales funnels. I'm sure you've seen many other software before. So let's take a look at what PayHip has to offer when it comes to their store builder. Okay, so keep in mind that I did create this a little before because I did a written review first. So what I like about this is that it is once again very simple to use. It's kind of like a click, point and click, and that's what you're gonna wanna edit. If you look at the left side of the page, we have the main sections where we can enter the header, the collection, which is going to be where our products are so far, which you can see, the about me, and of course you can add sections, and then there's going to be a footer, and of course a few more things. So for example, let's go to the header. We have our store logo, which at the time I don't have. Okay, I just have my store, you know, edit here. As you can see, that's where you would edit that. So I just gave that a placeholder for my store name. If you wanted to use a logo, you can. You can also use different logo for mobile devices. That's a nice little feature to have, given the fact that if you have a huge logo on desktop, you'll probably want to use a little bit smaller one when it comes to mobile. Okay, so let's do discard changes. We don't need that. Then we have navigation links, okay? Let's go to add, edit navigation links. These are gonna be up at the top section. So you have your shop, this is gonna be where you are now. There's contact, maybe you wanna add something else to an about me maybe, maybe uh, it's really gonna be up to you. I, those are two important things obviously. Contact could be for customer support, it could be for pre-sales questions, it could be for post-sales questions, whatever it's going to be. But these are the two main ones. And if you want to add something else, you would just go here, add link, name, and then of course, where you wanna link it to. And you can also drag and drop these. So maybe you wanna be the shop or, whoop. There we go. So if you want contact to be before shop and so on and so forth, that's how you would do that. Pretty simple stuff. Apply changes, sure. Save changes, sure. Let's save those changes and let's go back. So that's the header. Then we have the header settings, okay? Logo, once again, if we had one, we can tweak that a little. Then we have the header width, fixed position, show button search, excuse me, show search button, yes, no. A lot of these, what I like about these, it's as simple, do I want this, do I not want this? You do yes or no, okay, let's say we want it. Uh, so pretty much, I talked about this in my written review, it's kinda like just messing around with it. There's not a ton to edit, but the things that are there will make a difference if you like them or not. If you don't, just turn them off, no big deal, save changes. Let's go to discard, excuse me, not discard, back where the discard button is. Uh, header settings and announcement bar. This is a really cool feature. I like this, okay? If you've ever seen these before, I use these on my website. Uh, they are called sometimes sticky bars, announcement bars, horizontal bars. They're usually going to be at the top section or at the bottom section. So let's do this. Um, uh, new product arrived today, you know, click here to see, something like that. And then it would be, you know, Okay, you can do that too, whatever it's going to be. Actually, there we go. <laughs> Don't send your traffic to AOL, disclaimer, they have plenty of traffic, I'm just using that as an example. Or if you didn't wanna actually do a hyperlink like that, as you saw before, you can do to your blog post, you can do custom pages, you can do products, and then we have, let's just say this, or say, Affilio Blueprint launched today. Click here to check it out. Or we could say like, get 10% off by going through this link on our newly launched course. I'm just giving you ideas, but as you can see, this is what like an announcement bar is going to look at. You can do on homepage only. Okay, so it would only be on the main store or you can do on every single page you have, which is a cool thing because this is usually when something big comes up, you have a special, you have a discount, you have a promotion, or maybe you're looking to, whatever it's going to be, you just wanna get something in front of your visitors because it's important or they might really like it, that's when you're gonna to wanna to use an announcement bar, okay? So I'm just gonna take these off just to show you what that looks like, okay? So that's pretty much it when it comes to the header section. Let's look at the collection. So this is going to be the product share. So this is a perfect example of kind of just like tweaking it and see how you like it. For example, I like this 16, nine widescreen, but if I did some of these, like, okay, now it makes the picture look a little too big for my liking. Obviously I can change the pictures. This one's not bad, makes it look a little, it's a little smaller. It's similar to what I had before, but it's not blurry or anything. Okay, that's not bad. Too big for my liking. Okay, I don't like that one. That one's also not that bad for three. Then we have three, four, once again, a little too big. And then of course, widescreen, I like that. I think it's a great size. Uh, it's not blurry or anything, looks great. There we go. Price, no, yes. And I believe it doesn't have that simply because I'm not sure if I checked the box off or there's gonna be multiple price points for it, usually with a membership. That's probably the reason why it doesn't have there. Number of columns, you know, you can do two, you can do three. 
it's going to be up to you, obviously. So once again, the, the fewer columns you have, the more it's going to change around, obviously, like the aspect ratio. So that's something you can just tweak with or tweak around, play with, tweak around. Spacing, obviously, is going to be up to you. Then you have format, background, and color schemes. So once again, if you don't like the colors, if you want to change things around, you just simply can play with that. Personally, I love how it looks right now. It's simple. It's clean. I usually like things like that. I don't like them um, super complex. Then again, I'm not like a graphic designer or anything. So uh, that's just my opinion. Let's go back. Okay, about me, this was already here because I added my picture in, but there's not a ton to edit. For example, you have the about me, this is the title, you can you know, say about James or about you, about James Bond, whatever you wanna put there. Uh, obviously a description, you can put a follow button so if people wanna follow your store, so if you have like a new product coming out, whatever it's going to be. Uh, background, once again, color scheme, you can also remove this once again, yes or no. Show social media, I don't have any there, but either way, let's go yes, image shape circle, square, let's do this, looks great. And that looks good to me, save changes. If I can hit the button, of course, <laughs> let's go back. And of course we had a footer. This is just the basic stuff I just wanna kinda of quickly walk you through. Once again, text size, payment icons, uh, not a whole lot going on down there. Footer type simple, add navigation links, that's gonna be up to you. But you get a good idea of how you can actually use this. Once again, I like this. It is very simple to use. It's pretty much, you click on the, the spot you wanna edit, you, you mess with it a little, you tweak it around. For example, like I talked about, if I wanted to have more columns here, that's cool. If I wanted to have less, it makes the pictures a little bigger, so I might wanna change the aspect aspect ratio, but you kind of play around with it and you figure it out. And overall, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, and that's about it when it comes to the store editor. Let me back out of this because I want to talk about a few more key features that you might not be aware of. They're very helpful when it comes to overall increasing your sales. And that's always a great thing. Okay, so here I am back in the account. Now, if we go to marketing, obviously there's more sections here. There's a section for customers, also a section for analytics. There's obviously nothing here because I want to start from scratch just to kind of show you what it would be like when you first get started using it. Obviously, it's much more relatable to that. You can follow along with me and so on and so forth. But either way, let's go to marketing. Now, here we go. Here's a really cool thing. A lot of these right here that you're going to see are mostly about increasing your sales, and that's always a good thing. So the first is going to be a coupon code. Yes, they do offer coupon codes, like I talked about with the announcement bar. You could actually let people know that you now have a special coupon for one of your best products. You can save 10%. It's only for the next, I don't know, 10 people, whatever it's going to be, okay? Either way, add a coupon code. Okay, so look at this. So it's for all products except subscriptions, or you can do specific product, and then of course you can pick the one you want. So let's just say it's gonna be for all. You're feeling uh, very generous. I'm gonna have a 20% coupon code, uh, 20 off, or 20 off, something like that, sure. Number of times coupon can be used. It's gonna be no limit, and if you do wanna add a limit, you can actually add one, which I love, okay? How many times, if once again, I know if you've been around in the marketing industry for any amount of time, we only have 10 coupons left. And like, you know, for a fact, like it's been going on forever. They probably use more than 10 coupons. You can actually limit this, which I really like. And, or you could add an expiration date if you want. You can do never expires, or you can just do the first 10. Or you could do both like this. Maybe you realize that people love coupons and that by adding one, you get more sales. That's gonna be completely up to you, but that's how you can create your coupon. You just click on create and you would be good to go. Okay, so next is gonna be social discount. This is a way where people can obviously talk about your product by sharing it, and because of that, they will get a discount. I could have just read right here, which it says, spread the word about your products. Let customers receive discounts when they share on Facebook. Okay, so once again, you can select a product. It can be a discount to all of them or a specific one, the percentage that you wanna offer, and then a create social discount now. That'll give you the link for that, okay? Exit off on this one. Now, they do have an affiliate section where people can sign up to promote your product as an affiliate. This is something I also talked about in my review. This is pretty basic when it comes to it, given the fact that there are specific software tools that will that are 100% for you know doing affiliate programs and managing affiliates. So this is cool to have. It's not really a huge feature like many other software tools might have. So I'd say like kind of in the pros and cons, this was one of them where it's kind of like, it, it's not bad, it's nice that it's there, but don't expect many bells and whistles, okay? So 
That's one thing I noted. Also let you know that you'll have to handle paying affiliates yourself. They have affiliate sales report and of course where they can sign up. So not a whole lot going on there, but still it's nice to have, okay? Mailing list we talk about where you can actually automatically set it up where anytime someone purchases, they can go onto your mailing list. Do you know about that? And then we have cross sell, which is yet another great way to maximize your sales. So it says promote your products to customers when they add an item to their cart. Example, buy one, get one half off. So this is gonna be great when you have more products. So if someone goes to purchase something and you have something that's similar, it can cross sell them and say like, hey, you're probably gonna be interested in this and I'll even give you you know, a half price off, which is great, okay? Last but not least, let's look at referral. So kind of very similar to affiliates, but more so it's like you can you incentivize them. Once again, let me read this. Incentivize your customers to share your products with your friends and supercharge your sales. So add a referral, uh, apply to all, they get a discount. So once again, if you share it, you refer it to someone, you get a nice little discount. So a lot of ways to maximize your sales, uh, the affiliate section could be a little bit better, but overall, it's at least nice that they have it. And of course, coupons, discounts, mailing lists, cross-selling, and referrals are all great ways that you can actually maximize your ability to make more sales. Okay, and so there's one more thing I completely forgot was that to actually show you what it's going to look like when you click on a product. So let me go to the affiliate blueprint and click on that and show you. All right, and so here we are. It's very simple, but I only added a product uh, image here, description and title. Obviously, you'll want to add a little bit more than that. And you can even embed the video here, which I talked about. Very easy to do. Just get a YouTube link and uh, paste it in there, especially if people know you, you know, who you are specifically. If you're the face of the brand, you do maybe a lot of social media marketing and people know who you are. It's always a great thing to be able to do video and talk to your future customers or your current customers, whatever it's going to be. Now, Payhip also integrates both with Stripe and PayPal. I recommend that you utilize both because it gives your customers the ability to choose which one is going to work best for them. I've seen that in the past where people only want to use PayPal or maybe they only want to use credit card. So when you give them that option, it's going to be best overall for you. You can either choose to add it to cart or you can click on the buy now button. Let me show you what that looks like. Now in this example, I just have Stripe hooked up. You can obviously do PayPal. I just want to integrate one just for the example. But either way, obviously, as you can see, email address, that's where they can integrate it. So when they purchase, you get the buyer on your email list. And of course, their information is going to be right there. So that's what that looks like in terms of the kind of landing page that you get when it comes to purchasing. Obviously, the more you put here, the better, the more information that your future customers have the better buying decision they'll be able to make. So, so with all that being said, that was a, a in-depth overview of the features and everything, the perks and what else comes along with them. You might also be curious about how much PayHip is going to be in terms of pricing. So allow me to go through that right now. They have a really great pricing model. All right, so let's move on to the pricing of PayHip, which is another really big thing that I love about the software. As it says up top, simple pricing, you can get started now, no card required. So let's scroll down a little. As you can see, the first pricing right here on the left is going to be free forever, and there's going to be a 5% transaction fee. There's a question mark that also says that PayPal slash uh, Stripe will have a transaction fee as well. But I really like this because it means that anyone can get started selling. And in the beginning, PayHip is going to succeed when you succeed. It's the ultimate win-win experience. 5% transaction fee is certainly not a lot. And plus, they're going to take their money out when you get paid. So that's pretty much no risk whatsoever when it comes to getting started. I really like that. You don't see that often nowadays, but I, I really dig the fact that the better you do, the better they do. It's kind of like a win-win scenario, okay? So, and once you actually do start getting better, you start making more sales, you're gonna move on to the plus where it's gonna be $29 per month. While you are paying $29 per month, there's gonna be a 2% transaction fee. So in an ideal world, let's say you're doing the free forever and you're getting a 5% transaction fee. Once you start paying more than $29 per month in transaction fees, around there, okay, give or take, you're most likely gonna start wanting to move over here, okay? So like I said, the more you succeed, the more they succeed, okay? You can always start on the free forever and move up from there. If you're already doing a lot of volume, that's obviously something to keep in mind. And then last but not least, if you're doing more around that than transaction fees, the final thing is gonna be $99 per month with no transaction fee whatsoever. So that's something I really like about this. You really don't see that often. I guess you could call that the freemium model. Uh, it has started being utilized more in software, but I feel like not as much. This is a great way to incentivize the users and customers to do better because as you do better, you can move up and then both parties succeed at the same time. I really like that. So all in all, that is my review of PayHip. I do really dig it. I like a lot of things that they have to offer. In terms of the pros and cons, there were many things that I just like. Like I said, the affiliate section, 
it's really hard to really beef that up because like I said, there's complete softwares out there that do that just focus on that. So that could have been slightly a little better, but I'm not going to complain about it given the fact that you know it's at least there for you to use. I love the micro features that they have. They're great for when it comes to increasing your sales. I love the announcement bars. I love the simplicity of it. It's very easy to go through. Everything is step by step. It's clean. It's simple. The user interface is great and I think you're really going to like it. So with all that being said, I do recommend PayHip. And once again, the link is down below. If you go through that, you can sign up for free. No card required. And that's pretty much about it. If you also look deeper into the description, I will put a link to the long Long written review I did for this in case you'd like reading more about it but it's pretty much kind of the same thing but you know maybe you prefer reading it's up to you either way thank you so much for uh, watching this review of PayPip. if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below and that's about it thank you for watching and have a great day